Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's session. My name is Anka. I'm a social media strategist here at Social Bee. And today we will talk about how you can use Social Bee's AI features to maximize your content strategy. Together with me is my colleague, Andrea, who will be here in the chat for anything that you might need. And I'm also very curious to see um, if you are using Social Bee or if you're not using it yet. So do let me know in the chat. Um, before we begin, a few base statements, I guess. Um, this webinar will be recorded, so you don't have to worry about that. It will get um, sent to you probably tomorrow. Um, and then if you have any questions, there is a Q&A box somewhere around here at the bottom um, that you can use to ask your question. Um, I can see in the chat, some of you are using it. Some of you are in the trial period. Some of you are not using it. So I do hope that you find this webinar um, helpful. I'll be going through the main features that Social Bee has when it comes to AI. Sorry. And then I'll also be sharing a few tips and tricks on how you can use AI efficiently. So that way, um, you can make the most of your AI assistant here. If you have any questions, as I said before, add them in the Q&A box as that's the one that I see better. Um, the chat, I might miss some questions. So let's get this party on the road, shall we? I'll share my screen. You should be able to see it really soon, right about now. Can you see my screen? All good? Yes, perfect. Okay, so we're currently in the dashboard in Social B. This is the first thing that you see when you log into your account. Um, and you'll see that you can connect all of these profiles. You can set them to running if you want content to go out or pause them if you don't want content to go out. Really quickly, before I go into the AI, I wanted to also share the two systems that Social Bee has in place, just so that everyone's aware, because we are going to be working with one of those two systems today. So Social Bee has two main systems when it comes to posting. There's a queue-based system where every post has a specific posting time, and then there's a category-based system. And this is the the main system that we're going to be using today for three different reasons. Category systems can help you organize your content into content pillars, making you uh, making your, your content strat strategy a lot more clear, a lot more effective. Um, the second reason is that you can create a very um, balanced content mix, so a schedule by using the categories and then Third, you can repurpose and reuse your content with the re feature in these categories. Now, you can use these on your, on your own um, just by creating the posts manually or some sort of automations as well. But today we're going to focus on the Copilot, which is a feature that's still in beta testing. So if you see any bugs, we're still ironing them out. But in the, in the Copilot, you'll get an AI assistant that is ready to help you get the start, get the strategy started. So it'll start by asking you a couple of questions. I took the liberty of going through them already so that we don't waste time with this. Um, the idea is the more specific your answers, the quicker, the better uh, it would be. So fill in these questions and then hit generate. This will ask you if you have any, uh, so which profiles you wanna use, um, or if you don't have any profiles connected yet, it will also um, prompt you to connect your profiles here and help set up your account. So this would be the first step here. Then we're going to generate content categories. This will not touch any categories that you currently have already created in your account. So it will just start um, suggesting a category or a, a mix of categories on top of what you already have. And you can see that for me, it generated five categories, behind the scenes, case studies, client testimonials, expert interviews, and social media tips. These are um, the basis of my content pillars 
according to my replies from the previous questions. Um, so you'll find typically some sort of a promotional category, some sort of an engaging category, categories that offer, offer value like case studies or expert interviews, and some categories that make it a little more fun, like behind the scenes in this case. And you'll see that the categories that are created by the copilot are labeled copilot here. So if you're happy with these categories, you can just go ahead and use them and move to the next step. If you're not, you can hover your mouse over them uh, and you can delete the categories or change the settings for each category according to your needs. That way you can make sure that these work specifically for your needs, your goals, your objectives, and your particular strategy. So then we're gonna generate a schedule. And this works with the categories to create a weekly pattern that you can um, use to schedule your content. So instead of scheduling individual posts, this uses the categories in order to create a posting plan for you. So for instance, I have a product spotlight content going out on Wednesdays um, on Twitter. I have a zero click content um, going out on Instagram on Wednesdays. So it's different categories, different times, according to your analytics, as well as best practices, so that we can maximize those times when your audience is there to actually see that content. So again, here, just like with categories, you can edit them if you don't like um, the suggested option. You can change the categories. You can change the date, the times, all of it. You can even remove it if that's what you want. Um, and you can work with it to make sure that it uh, works for your goals again. Um, once you have that, we can move over into generating posts. Now, typically, I like to say that this is the best way to generate ideas because these posts are almost done when it comes to working. So you still need to add a little um, a visual maybe or help um, make the post. Oops, see, there I, there I said it. Uh, let's try it again. Hopefully it works this time. Um, if not, I do have some samples already generated so that we can work on those as well. Uh, but yeah, basically these, you can treat them as ideas so that you can work with them to process them further into the perfect um, post for you. So let's hope it works this time. I see a question in here, so I will um, answer the question while this thinks. Um, if we're managing a page, does it generate a report? It doesn't work, okay. Uh, I'll skip that for now. I'll let the tech team know and we'll skip that. Um, if you're talking about the co-pilot, no, it doesn't generate a report. Just to answer this question since I've um, read it already. It doesn't um, generate a report, but you can from your analytics. So there's an option to export a report and you can see all of the awesome analytics that you have um, for each particular profile in here so that you can then select the type of information that you want and generate a PDF report there. Okay, so let's go back into the categories now so that I can show you exactly what posts come out of this. And I'll go into the behind the scenes um, because this is where I have some spare co-pilot posts here. So um, you can see that my posts are, first of all, set as a draft, which means that these will not go out as they are right now because they still need to um, get some work done. So for instance, these don't have any profiles assigned. That's because I disconnected the profiles that were there before. So let me just quickly use the bulk editor to add um, a, a post a profile to all my posts. I'll go for Facebook. There we go. Okay, cool. So now that that's settled, we're going back in here and now we can see the profile is here as well. Um, you'll see that the caption is set already, although you can change it. Um, and you'll also see a note on each of these posts. And this note is a cue that you can use for your visuals. Um, so you can either take this as a 
a prompt to use in the AI uh, generating, image generating tools that you use, or you can use it to just create the visual um, that you have there. So let, let me copy that note and I'll just click on the post to edit it. And this way um, I'll open up the post editor. This is the second part of the AI tool because it can help you generate captions and images as well. So if I wanted to use this the way I have it here, I can just um, use it, of course. I can just add the visual and use it. But what if I want to maybe rewrite this so that it's a little more um, inviting or friendly or I don't know. So we can go into the AI tool uh, in the post editor, which is right here, and we can generate captions. It picks up the caption that you are already um, that you already have if you have one. If not, this will be um, empty so that you can add your AI prompt in there. So let's say I want to go into the hmm, sorry. Um, let's say I want to go into the rewrite section. And um, I can choose one of the prompts that I have here. Let me copy this first. Okay, so let's rewrite the following content to improve it. So I have the caption here. Um, I have um, all the, the prompt ready. I can choose the tone of voice for my um, post. I can choose the number of words. Let's say I want it a little longer. So around 90 words, and I wanted to generate hashtags and include emoji. So I can use it, I can generate it once I've set it, everything up. And now I have three options in here that work a lot better than the one that I had before. So come on in and take a sneak peek behind the scenes um, at the buzzing hive of activity here at Social B, which is actually a white wall for me, but yeah. <laughs> Um, so let's say I like the first and the last one. I'll just click on them to select them and use them in my post. So in this case, I now have two variations of this post generated with AI, which means that I can share two pictures that I might have from my um, office um, to kind of use this idea more than once to repurpose it without it feeling repetitive because it's not the same wording. It probably won't be the same image either. So I can just work with it a lot more. Um, you'll see the two variations being labeled here. And basically what this, what this does is that the first time um, the post goes out, variation one goes out. And once the post needs to go out again, variation two goes out. And if you keep requeuing this, it'll just keep a loop going between the variations that you have in there. So it's going to create a lot more content for you from there. If you wanted to also include an image, there are a few options, including an AI one. So uh, you can either add images directly from your computer. You can work with Canva directly in Social B. You can use Unsplash for royalty-free images or Giphy for a fun GIF for platforms where that's accommodated. But um, you can also generate images. And this image generation tool will also suggest prompts based on um, what you, what your caption is about. So let's see which one we want to choose. I'll, I'll just go with the first one. Uh, we want it in a natural style and let's just see what it comes up with. Keeping in mind that AI, uh, is not really good at generating text, for instance. So, um, try to avoid things that have a lot of text in them for this purpose. I'm really curious what it comes up with this time. So the prompt is the image features a bright and modern office space with team members gathered around the table, deep in discussion and brainstorming. You can see the energy and dedication in their expressions as they work together to create top-notch content for their clients. And this is what we came up with. This is quite animated from what I can see. Um, so, not exactly what I had in mind. Maybe I wanted to change the prompt a little bit and 
um, work on it again and generate it again. Or if I just like one, I can just select it and um, use it in my post like that. So once I have it in here, it's a lot easier for me to just work um, with the rest of my post and, and create my content moving forward. So these are the main AI features that Social Bee has. Social Bee actually has a lot more features than this, but AI related specifically, these are the ones. Um, and I also wanted to share some tips and tricks on how you can actually work better with the AI. So in order for me to do that really quickly, I'll stop sharing my screen so that I can switch to the right screen here. And that way I can um, edit here. So let me share my screen again. Awesome. This will be a really quick 30 minute webinar. So you don't have to um, wait too long um, for the information. Can you see my screen again? You should be able to see the slides this time. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So uh, we're talking about how you can speed up the process of creating content by using AI. And it's basically something that now everyone uses for everything, really. So um, AI tools can definitely help you every step of the way when it comes to generating social media posts, creating your strategy, or even just crafting um, a, a reply to, to a comment or a DM on your socials. Using these tools, you'll be able to um, automate a lot of your processes when it comes to content creation and speeding things up so that you can spend less time on creating content and more time on other aspects of your business. And this is especially important on um, businesses or for businesses like solopreneurs or smaller businesses, smaller teams where you have to do more in less time and with less um, resources. So AI is a good um, assistant to have in these cases as well. So let's actually talk about um, a few tips and tricks that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, so I have five here. Uh, tips on how you can develop an effective AI prompt, how you can use your existing content, um, communicate with your AI tool, fact check your content, and um, put a personal spin on things. And I'll start with how you can write the perfect prompt. There are three steps here. And in case you are not familiar with AI prompts, it's just a command that you give the AI in order to help communicate um, and specify your goals for the, the output that you want the AI to provide. So in these three steps, um, there are a few things that you should do. Number one, specify exactly what type of content you want and from what perspective. So um, act as a social media strategist or something like this. I'll have a few examples a little um, later on. Um, step number two will help you uh, if you give sufficient context to your post or to the AI about the topic of your post. Um, mention anything that's tone of voice related, um, demographic related, um, what's your desired result, what call to actions you want, things like that. So I want people to book calls with me. I want people to go to my website, to read my blog, to buy my book, to do whatever you want them to do. And step three is to also define any restrictions that you have. So this means anything that you don't want to cover. I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to um, be rude. I don't want to be aggressive. I don't want this to look a certain way or feel a certain way of things like this. So you can add the restrictions as well. And this will help you create the perfect prompt. Now, once you have that, you can use it to maximize the value of your existing content as well um, and also create new content. 
Um, so if you want to use existing content to create even more content, that way you can kind of keep this loop going and it, it will help you save some time in the process. Um, so with this, there are three st strategies that I, ooh, oh, okay, <laughs> that I thought I would mention. Uh, base your content um, on an industry statistic. This will help make sure that your content is informative, that it's interesting to your audience, and it gets the, the starting point going of, of the conversation with your audience, but also with the AI so that you can generate more content. Uh, the second strategy is to refresh your evergreen content by creating multiple variations of the same post. This is something that I showed you earlier with um, Social Bee's um, post generator because you can choose multiple variations from the same post and make sure that um, you're, you're covered through the recycling process as well. And the third variation is to customize um, one post for several platforms as well. So this way you have the platform specific requirements of each individual platform. So, you know, a more uh, professional tone on LinkedIn, a friendlier voice on Facebook, um, shorter text for Twitter, things like this, that you can use the AI for in order to save time and effort. Um, so with these, an example of basing your content on a statistic um, is the one that you see on the screen right now. This particular one is um, something that we saw a while back that we thought we would create a post around. And this would be a great tw tweet post, for instance, or an image post that we can use um, somewhere on its own. It can also be the base of a bigger post or a bigger campaign that we might do. So keep in mind to save interesting industry statistics that you might come across here and there. Um, it can help you generate content. The second strategy um, example is to create variations of the same post. I showed you how you can do that with Social Bee's AI post generator. You can also do it with ChatGPT, which is this example here. So you can take a post, create different variations, and use that um, for each one of your um, recycles. And then to customize the post for each profile, again, this is something that you can do in Social Bee. So I, if I have my post here, I do have a button to customize the post for each profile. And then if I select multiple profiles, I'll be able to um, work on the post individually. But this would mean that I need to go in and edit it individually or add all the common elements beforehand. Um, in here, I have it set to ChatGPT. So this screenshot is from ChatGPT, just to show you that you can also do it there so that you can copy and paste it to whatever platform that you're using. I also decided to share a few effective phrases that you can use in your AI prompt. So things like act as a social media strategist, write a social media post designed for small businesses and get them to book a call with me, um, avoid topics, use um, one of the formulas, um, summarize the, the text into a social media post and things like this so that it can help you um, move things along a little faster. And feel free to take a screenshot of this if you want to. Um, I'll keep it on for five more seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I'm moving on into the next one. This is an example of a not so good prompt and a good prompt. So if you are using a generic prompt, something like write a promotional social media post for a marketing agency, um, it's going to give you generic results because there's no detail in this. There's no information. Um, if you give it more specific information like I did in this particular prompt, I want you to act as a social media specialist, write a promotional LinkedIn post about how your marketing agency can help small businesses, that's my target audience, to increase their sales, that's the goal. Um, 
address three customer pain points and use a persuasive tone of voice to convince small business owners to book a free consultation. Avoid using aggressive sales phrases. I can see people missed the screenshot, so I'm going to slide back so that you can take it. Uh, you'll also be able to watch the replay um, probably tomorrow. So take the screenshot now. Again, I'll keep it on for five more seconds um, so that you can take the screenshot and then we can move into the next um, slide. And if you're using, if you're questioning the AIDA, PASS or SOAP methods, uh, these are acronyms that are um, used for different um, marketing tactics to help you help guide your audience through the sales funnel basically awesome okay so i'm moving on to the next one this is another good one to take a screenshot so while i keep babbling on about it feel free to do that as well um these are words that you can use instead of write write can also be really generic so you can make your your post a lot more detailed and a lot more accurate and even just a lot better by just using um things like analyze um answer argue even brainstorm if you're working with brainstorming ideas um narrow your focus predict produce propose recommend um, rephrase, summarize, all of these work really well um, when when you're using a prompt to create a more specific content. And yes, my colleague Andrea in the chat already included a um, an article that we have on the blog about copywriting formulas and examples so that you can learn more about the AIDA or SOAP or PASS methods as well. Another good screenshotable uh, moment is this uh, tone of voice ideas. So it's good. It's good practice to mention a tone of voice in your prompt so that the AI can actually generate content that's closer to your brand identity and tone of voice. Um, and there's a lot of tone of voices out there, but these are the ones that we found work the best here. So um, I personally use a lot confident, conversational, friendly, but educational, informative, gentle, humorous, funny, informal, all of these work really well. So um, pick and choose the ones that, that work best for your tone of voice, and you'll find a lot better results when you mention these in your prompts. Now, moving on to tip number four, how to fact check the validity of your generated content. As you know, AI generated content can be inaccurate and it can contain false information, which can directly and negatively impact your credibility if it happens. So um, try to fact check all of the prompts, all of the content that's generated by AI. Don't take it for granted because um, the AI language model uh, that all writing tools use have been trained um, with around, I'd say, 3 billion pages of content from the internet. So not everything that you see on the internet is accurate. Some of that can contain biases. Some of it can contain false claims or problematic views that might not align with your values. And since the AI systems cannot check the accuracy of these um, types of information, it might be the case that some false claims slip through the cracks, which is why it's important to use your expertise to judge um, the correctness of the information, to make a Google search and ver verify, um, you know, like the journalists do, fact check your information before you um, share it ahead. And that way you can avoid any problematic views there. And number five, um, the, the fifth tip that I have here is how you can edit and personalize your AI generated social media posts um, for your content. So um, as I said before, it's important to fact check and add a personal note um, in your posts so that it is authentic to you. And with this, 
it's important to um to keep in mind that your personal notes are not going to get picked up by the AI and it needs to be a little more personal. So make sure um, all of your social media guidelines are, are um, respected, include your tone of voice, make sure that you check every post that is generated by the AI, use your knowledge to include even more content when applicable. So if you have some additional information that the AI did not um, provide, you can add it in there to make it your own. You can reference statistics. You can um, include your own studies even to back up those claims. You can include links and CTAs or call to actions that will improve your traffic, that will improve your conversion rate and all of that. Now, I see someone asking about the cost of Social B. So you'll be happy to know that you can get 50% off of the cost of Social B for sticking through um, this webinar with us until the end. So if you're interested in Social B, before I go into the Q&A session, um, you can use the code Social B 50 times three to get 50% off for, for three months on any of the Social B plans. Now, um, I will go into the Q&A. I'll leave this on um, while I do that so that we have that going. Let's see what I have in the chat and then I'll, I'll go into the Q&A box. So can AI create um, posts for content categories that I have already created and schedule them? Uh, you can use the AI to create posts for categories that you already have. Yes, not the co-pilot, but the AI post generator that would work there. Um, and scheduling them, if your categories are scheduled, then you don't need to schedule individual posts. Otherwise, um, at the moment, you will need to schedule them manually. And then someone asks, no monthly plans? We do have monthly plans. If you're on the pricing page, there's a toggle to switch between monthly and yearly plans. The yearly plans are a little um, more cost effective because you essentially pay for 10 months, get 12. Um, and that includes a discount as well. Um, but the, the monthly plans are, are there too. Okay, let's see what we have in the Q&A box here. So can you upload a photo and get an AI caption done for you? Um, yes, but it won't look at the photo at the moment. It doesn't have that capability in Social B. So if I create a new post and I upload a photo, let's see which one, this one with the coffee. I can still use the AI post generator to generate captions but I would have to describe the photo manually in here in order to make it work. Um, does the AI remember the answers to the initial interview we do with it? I was in extremely detailed about my business clients and the interview. Will it put that information when I prompt? For instance, if I prompt about a specific product, will it put the info uh, from the interview about the pricing. Not right now, but this is, so I guess the answer is yes and no. In the posts, you, you will not, this, this post editor right now is not connected to the co-pilot. So the information that you've provided in the co-pilot right now is only used in here. And yes, it does remember it and you can um, use it to generate content in here, but it will also be able to do so in the future um, in the post editor because we are planning on improving this whole thing. Uh, next question. I have a yearly plan, but I want to increase the number of socials that I can attach to my account. Um, you can email our success team at success at socialb.com. They'll be able to assist you with increasing the number of socials that you can um, attach or upgrading your account. Um, if, if the plan that is the next tier is too much for, for your current needs. Um, are you able to add music to a post? I'm assuming this refers to Instagram and TikTok. Unfortunately, 
because of copyright restrictions, they're not able to share this in the API at the moment. So no, you're not able to do that right now, regardless of whether you're using Socialbee or any other third-party tool. You are able, however, to have a workaround towards it if you um, share your content via mobile reminders instead. And then the final question that I have in the in the Q&A box is, does social be, um, does, if we have a, a one-off lifetime payment? Um, and no, the answer is no. At the moment, we do not have any lifetime offers. There's a monthly plan and there's a yearly plan as well. So you can opt for one or the other, but there are no lifetime offers um, at this time, at least. So let me see if there's anything else in the chat here. Can social be used to increase the subscribers on YouTube and video views? I guess that would depend on your strategy. Um, social B can be used in two things for YouTube. You can share the content on YouTube from your social B account and, <laughs> sorry. You can also work with the engage module to reply to your comments from YouTube directly in here. So this is also something that you will be able to do. That's what Social B can help you with on YouTube specifically right now. So I guess that's all the questions that you guys have. So again, if you wanna take advantage of the 50% off for three months, you can use the code Social B 50 times three at checkout whenever um, you're ready to purchase. If you don't have an account yet, there's a 14-day free trial that you can start. No credit card required. Um, and um, yeah, just, just start it and see if it works for you. And if you're curious about Social Bee, uh, we do these monthly walkthrough webinars where I go through the entire platform. Maybe Andrea, can you add a, a link to the next webinar? um in the chat you're you're um welcome to join that and ask more questions about social be there i see someone raised your hand um if you could just type in your question either in the q a box or in the chat uh i can i have a recording yes you will have it all recorded tomorrow so yes there will be a recording Okay, well, in that case, thank you all for joining today's session. If any questions pop up, you can always reach out to us at hello at socialbee.com or myself personally at anka at socialbee.com and we'll be more than happy to assist. Um, that's it for today. Thank you all for joining. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time.